Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The ENT Resident. My name is Dr. Moshmi Das, and in today's class, I'll be teaching you about the anatomy of facial nerve. Now, to begin with, the facial nerve it is the seventh cranial nerve. It is also the nerve of the second branchial arch. It runs from the pons to pyramid. You can remember it by remembering P to P. This nerve is a mixed nerve which has a motor root, a sensory root, which is known as the nerve of Risberg and parasympathetic axons. There are about 7,000 to 9,000 myelinated axons in the motor root of the facial nerve and 3,000 to 5,000 myelinated axons in the sensory root of the facial nerve. Both nerves also contain unmyelinated axons. Next, we move on to what are the functional components of facial nerve. There are five functional components to it. The first one is the special visceral or the branchial efferent, which is basically supplying the muscles which are derived from the second branchial arch. The second one is a general visceral efferent. This carries the secretomotor fibers to the lacrimal, submandibular and sublingual glands and smaller secretory glands in the nasal mucosa and the palate. Thirdly lies the special visceral afferent, which carries taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue via the cauda tympani nerve and from the soft and hard palate via the greater superficial petrosal nerve. The fourth component is a general sensory afferent. Now the general sensory afferent component, it carries cutaneous sensation including pain from the posterior aspect of the ESE. And lastly, the fifth component is a general visceral afferent which carries pain from the tongue and the oropharynx. Now we will go into slightly more details about the functional components. The first one is the special visceral or the branchial efferent component which I told you is supplying the muscles of the second branchial arch. Now what do these muscles include? It includes the facial muscles, platysma, buccinator, auricular muscles, tapedius, posterior belly of diacastric and stylohyoid. The second component is the general visceral efferent component. Now this component basically what happens is the preganglionic parasympathetic axons from neurons in the superior salivatory nucleus, they synapse on the postganglion neurons which lie either in the pterygopalatine ganglion or the submandibular ganglion and from here they are supplying the secretomotor fibers to the lacrimal, submandibular and sublingual glands and the smaller secretory glands in the nasal mucosa and the palate. Coming to the third component, it is a special visceral afferent component. Now these axons, they carry taste from anterior two-third of the tongue via the cauda tympani nerve and the soft and the hard palate via the greater superficial petrosal nerve. The fourth one is the general sensory afferent component. Now these are carrying cutaneous sensations including pain from the posterior aspect of the ESE and this is also largely contributed by the Arnold's nerve. Now the Arnold's nerve is a branch of the vagus nerve which is the 10th cranial nerve. And this uh, component is responsible for a few things which we notice clinically. It is responsible for coughing during cerumen removal. It is also responsible for idiopathic otalgia, Hitzelberger sign and to be the site of vesicular eruptions in Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. So this general sensory co afferent component explains all of these things. And the fifth component is a general visceral afferent component which mediates pain from the tongue and the oropharynx. Now this finding, this is a relatively new finding. This finding is based almost exclusively on Ramsey Hunt's description of the occasional distribution of vesicles on the palate and in the anterior pillar and on the anterior two thirds of the tongue in the distribution of the cauda tympani in cases of herpes zoster oticus. So what we see is the motor component is mainly the special visceral or the branchial efferent component which is responsible for all the motor supply of the facial nerve whereas the general visceral efferent, the special visceral afferent, uh, the general sensory afferent and the general visceral afferent all the other four components these axons they form the nervous intermediates. The nervous intermediates is basically the sensory root of the facial nerve. It is also known as the nerve of Risberg. 
and this is the representation of all the functional components as you can see from the motor nucleus of the seventh nerve arises the special visceral efferent component supplying all the facial muscles and all the other muscles I mentioned. Second, the general visceral efferent component which is this, it arises from the superior salivatory nucleus and by the help of two nerves, first is the caudal tympani nerve and it supplies the submandibular and the sublingual glands via its secretomotor supply and via the greater petrosal nerve by synapsing in the pterygopalatine ganglion, it supplies the lacrimal gland and the nasal uh, smaller glands in the nasal mucosa and palate. The third component is a special visceral effer, uh, afferent component which is basically arising from the nucleus of tra solitary tract, tract which is also known as tractus of nucleus solitarius. From here uh, it supplies, it carries taste sensation to the anterior two thirds of the tongue by the cauda tympanine nerve and the fourth one is the general somatic afferent component which is arising from the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and it is carrying pain sensation from the posterior superior region of the EAC. So these are all about the functional components of the facial nerve. Now the facial nerve has intra and or also extracranial connections with certain nerves. These are with the cutaneous branches of all three divisions of the trigeminal nerve which includes branches of auriculotemporal, buccal, mental, lingual, infraorbital, zygomatic and ophthalmic nerves. Also with branches of vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves and with branches of the cervical plexus which includes the great auricular, greater and lesser occipital and the transverse cervical nerves. Now what is the importance of facial nerve having these intra and extracranial connections? Now these cutaneous connections, they are very important in facilitating the perineural spread of tumors that arise either within the parotid or on the face and it explains why some patients with perineural spread from cutaneous or parotid malignancy may also present with vocal cord palsy. It's because of these connections with the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves.